his power in the precious blood of the lamb and uh, we thank god for his blood without his blood without his blood without his blood we would not be saved to know his grace and favor and blessing in our lives well let's begin to talk about this uh scripture it's uh about the blood it's a bloody mess it's a bloody mess it's just a bloody mess it's just a it's a bloody mess in hebrews let me get right into in hebrews chapter 9 verses and i'll read a couple versions over the next couple sundays and uh, we'll go from there Uh, hebrews chapter 9 verses 18 through 22 in the message bible you will find these words even the first plan required a death to set it in motion after moses had read out all the terms of the plan of the law god's will he took the blood of sacrificed animals and in a solemn ritual sprinkled the document and the people who were its beneficiaries Then he attested its validity with the words, This is the blood of the covenant commanded by God. He did the same thing with the place of worship and its furniture. Moses said to the people, This is the blood of the covenant God has established with you. Practically everything in a will hinges on a death. That's why blood the evidence of death is used so much in our tradition especially regarding the forgiveness of sins let me go over to the new living translation which is the text that we anchor it in in verse 22 in fact according to the law of moses Nearly everything was purified with blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Just a few minutes today, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. Amen. I love it when my family texts me while I'm uh, preaching. Amen. And the people of God, we do have some of the saints that do that too. It's, it's all right. It really is all right. Everything hinders and hinges on humanity's obedience to God's law and God's principles. Since it is, watch this, watch how I say this now. Hold on to your seats. Since it is his or her earth, I just said that, and we are pilgrims and strangers in it, it stands to reason that we might fare better if we observe the boundaries, the limits, and the alignments of our actions with its operations. In other words, my brothers and sisters, since this here world doesn't belong to us, we might make it a little better through it if we kind of followed the rules of the one who made the earth. Talk to me, Psalmist, the earth is the Lord's, (laughs) and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. As a result of our failure to obey, We are beset with life thwarted and suffocated by the consequences of our own sequence of actions. Can I give you just a couple of quick uh, passing uh, examples? Our elder mentioned environmental justice on the quarterly conference call this week. and, And if we look at the history of polluted water, uh, we grew up in a time, Reverend Crump, when we would drink out the holes from around the side of the house when we was thirsty. You remember that? I mean, there was nothing like, you know, and then we used to take the holes and see how, how much can you drink and fill up your belly, or anybody know what I'm talking about? Uh, but 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 I 
I dare say I don't want anything coming directly out of any faucet anywhere too much these days. Uh, I, I, at least if it's going to run through my refrigerator, I'm going to put that filter in there so it can hopefully filter out some of the stuff. Our polluted water came about because chemical companies trying to maximize their profit and increase their bottom line did away with the safe disposal of their chemical byproducts. Our, our air is polluted, and now we have a new statistic that we keep up with in the air, and it pops up in my app. It talks about air quality, and at about 6.30 this morning, the air quality in Fort Washington was a, 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 in, in Brandywine was 72, which was moderate. And there was a little notation that said the air quality was better yesterday at this time. I'm sorry, is better today at this time than it was yesterday yesterday at this time and I said well maybe we're thankful for that because of some rain that has fallen. Uh, we have a polluted earth and we are reminded yet again and several of our members are great advocates for environmental justice for all of the dumping of contaminated soil that has been brought to Brandywine, an unincorporated township, over the last two decades. Dump trucks rolling down five, rolling down 210 to dump uh, polluted soil over here in our neighborhood uh, while other neighborhoods have it removed. How uh, did we get such a sequence of actions? Well, my brothers and sisters, here is the posit today when we declare that I know it was the blood. If there's ever been a time you're going to have to know it, you need to know it now. Uh, you, you need to really be uh, washed in it, immersed in it. You need to understand the power of the blood. You need to know that it is because of the blood that your sins are forgiven. And so how did we get to this shedding of blood uh, when principles of God's creation were violated? Uh, can I give you just a few things to consider for our lesson today? Uh, that when we talk about uh, the actions that we uh, 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 created through our sequence, uh, we talk about number one cause, which is the sequence of events. Uh, are you with me? Number one is cause, uh, which is the sequence. Pride is at the root of all of our disobedience. Uh, we we want to be something we're not. We want to be able to do something we shouldn't. We want to be able uh, 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 to say something that we m should not say. Pride is at the root. And that was at the root of that first conversation that the serpent, who at that time was upright, was having in Eve's ear. He said, now, did God really say that if you eat from this tree, you would die? Uh, or is that something that Adam related to you after you got here? This is where the first feminist movement starts because you need to understand that anything that is outside of the order of God, watch this, whether it was created by the man or the woman, the matter is not. It is disorder, and when you come out of the order of God, there are consequences that you're going to face. Can I just preach a little bit here today? Uh, he said, here's the temptation. I know Adam told you you because you weren't there when God said it. Adam told you that you eat, if you eat it, you will die. Well, that's not really what God said, Adam, but if that's how you chose it to relate to your, to your Eve, maybe you understood something about Eve that everybody else uh, didn't understand, you know. Maybe you understood that though you got your bonus check, you didn't put that in the house account because if Eve see that money, it's gone to Pentagon City and it ain't never coming back. I don't know, uh, Adam, what it took for you you to run your situation, but God said, uh, he didn't say that you would die in that day. He said, if you eat it in that day, and then watch what Satan says. He says, you're not going to die. You, God knows that you're going to become just like him and you'll know what he knows. Oh, so he appeals uh, to her sense of knowing. But here's the, the fault of the text. Uh, and, and you need to understand uh, that while the serpent is standing there talking to Eve, Adam is sitting right there and saying nothing, mm, mm, and saying nothing. You got it. 
here, here's the, 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 the cause or the sequence, the pride. They cause them to eat the fruit. And then they go into this thing called the great cover-up. Uh, they take fig leaves, sew them together, and cover themselves because all of a sudden they see each other in a different way because they are both disobedient before God. Uh, and then they realize that not only do we see each other in a different way, God also must see us differently. So when he comes to look for them, instead of them coming out to be with him, they hide from him as if anybody could hide from God. Uh, here is the solution. They come up with fig leaves, but God comes up with animal skins over in Genesis 3.21. We see it. We see it. The scripture says that they had made fig leaves to cover their nakedness. But in verse 21 of chapter 3, the Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife, and he clothed them. He clothed them because there was a cause that created a secret sequence of events that they did not know were going to happen. Throughout the scriptures, beloved, garments are symbols of righteousness, either God's all-sufficient righteousness or man's self-made righteousness. Isaiah says it this way, I will rejoice in 61 and 10. He says, I will rejoice greatly in the Lord. Uh, for he has, he, my soul will exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has wrapped me with a robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. The prophet Isaiah also comes back to speaks to us in Isaiah 4, 64 and 6. He says, for all of us have become like one who, are, who is unclean. All of our righteous deeds are like like filthy garments and all of us wither like a leaf what is he talking about that same leaf that Adam and Eve tried to cover themselves with and our iniquities like the wind they take us away Paul goes back and stated it, that when I looked in my closet for some righteousness all I found were filthy rags here's the kicker beloved that we never see in the scripture what what what, what happened to get the skins is that God had to kill something in the garden. Uh, did you, I, I want you to get that. I want you to get that. Something had to die in order for Adam and Eve to have the right and the, the opportunity, rather, to still be able to live. For what they had done, they should have been punished with death. God, knowing this from the beginning, God picks out two animals from the flock and he kills them. Now, here's the thing. We don't see in Scripture the execution of the animals. But we see the proof of their death. Because God takes their skins and covers them up. The skins verify the proof of life. There was something alive that's now in this dead skin. There, there was something alive that was in this dead skin that is now dead died and it's died so it can cover your deficiency we don't know what happened i don't know if god actually went into a little teaching session and had a teaching moment with adam and eve and showed them this is what death looks like for the thing about adam and eve is they had never seen death before because there is no death in the presence of god oh i just said something up in here when you walk with him and talk with him when he is your own when you know that you are covered with his blood filled with his spirit anointed with his power there is no death in your life you merely move from one station to the next station you move from mortal to immortality you move, move from putting off corruption to taking on incorruptibility the cause and the sequence is there that's why i like the hymn writer that says oh you know the hymn but here's that second verse when he shall come with trumpet sound oh may i then in him be found how you gonna be found campbell Dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless, to stand before his throne. Since a life had to be sacrificed before Adam and Eve could have been clothed with coats of skins, 
There was a substitutionary death. I want you to get that word in your note taking. Substitutionary death. Substitutionary death. God must always provide adequate covering for man to stand before him and to be clothed in righteousness. We can't fix ourselves up. You know how we are. Where you going? I'm going to see God. There's nothing you can do to get in his presence. He has to make it possible. Only in Christ is man ever properly clothed. Our actions against the principles of Mother Earth create and interrupt the intended sequence that God has ordained. And when the sequence is interrupted, there will be consequences. Leads me to my second point of the conversation. Not only there is cause and sequence, there is effect and consequence. What was the effect of them eating in the garden the fruit that they were not supposed to eat? Nakedness and shame. They were naked, didn't even know what naked was. Amen. Uh, Didn't even have a reference point to it. I had no understanding. There was no death. There was no shame. When God comes looking for his creation, there wasn't shame and hiding because I'm walking in communion. And because I'm walking in communion, there's nothing that I'm to be ashamed about. It is human nature to hide who we are because of what we've done. Let me say that one more time. It is our human nature to hide who we are because of what we've done. Now, we didn't think that a substitutionary life had to be offered for our disobedience, but we soon found out from our Father Adam and Mother Eve that that's not the case. Something has to substitute. Here's the interesting thing about the word substitute. You know, like when we have substitute teachers, those are teachers who, can, who have paid the price to stand in the place of the one who was the teacher. Let let me say that one more time. When we have a substitute teacher, that is one who has paid the price to be able to stand in the place where the teacher stands. We call them a substitute. When we talk about substitutionary, uh, there is a word in substitutionary that we need to pick out. It is the word tuition. Uh, Did you get that? substitutionary the word the root in there is tuition which is the price of payment for instruction how many of us went to school and we paid a price to be instructed Uh, we paid a price to learn what we had to learn to do what we are called to do we paid the price and we're so glad they gave us watch this Uh, uh, oh 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 oh, i hear it now i didn't even know it i didn't even realize it before They, they don't give it to us anymore in that format but it used to be it used to be sheepskin Oh, oh, I I just got that. Some of you are going to get that. We'll work with that in Bible study. Tuition, the price of payment for instruction. And so when we talk about substitutionary, the one who is substituting has paid the price to be able to stand in the place of the one who is the authentic or first level. Something has to die in order for something to live. That's the balance of the scales. And so the effects, the consequences, my brothers and sisters, they have price tags. Amen. How many of you are paying the consequences for your, uh, 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 for your actions? Amen. Uh, that's called the price tag. Some of us are on payment plans. Hello, somebody. Some of us are on extended payment plans. Some of us, God was so gracious and kind to us, Bo, that we got off with zero months. In, and we got 18 months at zero interest. Thank you, Jesus. God gives us a time to get reordered and shift our lives to be able to move into what is next in our lives. I'm so glad that he is a substitution. He paid the price so that I can be saved. Well, when I talk about the word consequences, those are effects or consequence. Consequences, what I affectionately call the, con, the, con, the uh, uh, combination of two words, consider sequence. You did not consider the sequence of events that your 
uh, 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 your actions would precipitate. So the cause, that's a, a sequence. Here comes now the effect, that's the consequence. School was expensive. Not just for Adam and Eve who got kicked out of the garden forever, so we have them to thank uh, for not having a long life mortality uh, because, you know, after that, they lived for seven, eight hundred, nine hundred years. Then we messed up again, and God said to Noah, uh, at this point, I'm getting ready to cut you all short. Uh, you, you're not going to live past 120 years on the other side of this flood, and our mortality rate continues to go down and down and down, and, or up and up and up. We did we we die earlier. School is expensive. Animals had to die in a place where there was supposed to be no death. Uh, plus, there was the expulsion from the garden for concern over eating the tree of life and living forever with the consequence. I want you to get that in your spirit. Huh? Uh, uh, Some of you, you missed your shout just then. Uh, Because of Jesus, the substitute, who paid the tuition, the price for what we had to go through, uh, uh, guess what? There are some consequences that we should have to live with forever, but thank God the consequence was paid for. Oh, I wish I had somebody up in here. Bishop Daniels always says it this way. Bishop David Ryan Nicol Daniels. He says, every time you sin, something dies. <laughs> and if you woke up this morning, sinner saved by grace. If you woke up this morning, sinner saved by grace. Let me say it one more time. If you woke up this morning, sinner saved by grace. That means something died so you can live. Uh, Now, some consequences are harder than others. Uh, You remember when David had committed adultery with Bathsheba? And the baby was born and the baby was sick and David fell on the ground. He's fasting and praying and calling on the name of the Lord. And the prophet came back and said, "Um, baby not going to live. Mm-mm. And then when David noticed that the baby had died, David got on up, went on home, washed himself up, went to the church, said, God, thank you for your grace and favor. I want to give you all the praise. Went home, comforted his wife because he realized that sequence uh, had some consequences. And that's a hard consequence. But I learned the difficulty of obedience. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, here's one of the things that I've noticed prophetically in this, just in these last couple of months as we're moving to the end of a phase of one of the woes mentioned in Revelation 16. Over in Revelation chapter 16, it talks about the woes, and we talked about it last year. Uh, And disobedience after the first woe, the vial was poured out on the people has continued because people what? Won't repent. They won't repent. Humanity won't repent. We keep talking about march and register and vote and economic justice and social justice and environmental justice, but there will be no justice until the Lord of justice rules in our life. I keep hearing people talk about we've got to get up and all the Bible says we've got to go down. What? Go down on our knees and repent. Go down and ask God for his mercy and grace. Go down and tell God how sorry for our for what we've done. But here's the thing that concerns me about humanity. Now as we move into the next woe, we're already into the second vial in Revelation 16. But now here comes the war. Oh, don't think Putin is doing this on his own. It talks about it in Revelation. God says, I'm calling the king of the north. Come on down. Uh, And then I'm going to call the king of the east. Come on over. And where am I going to bring them? I'm bringing them down to the valley of Megiddo, where we get the battle of Armageddon from. None of them are moving in their own wisdom. God is ordering all of this in this time. But where are we to be? We are to be repented. Now as we move into this next woe, which is a world war that we have not seen even bugs got right to be in the church amen have not seen before we didn't repent for the first one COVID-19 but now here comes the second one and we haven't even got back into the sanctuary yet 
at least if I have to go through consequences, let me get the lesson so I won't have to repeat this action again. How many of us have had to repeat classes and courses in life and we have to keep paying tuition and tuition and tuition and tuition to take the same course over and over and over again? You know how we've been in the pandemic. Oh, we want to go back. What you want to go back to? We want to go back to what we were used to doing, but we don't want to go back to what God wants done. Let me say it one more time. We don't we want to go back to what we are used to doing, but we don't want to go back to what God wants done. Let me say it one more time for the Holy Ghost. Maybe they'll get it. We want to go back to what we are used to doing, but we don't want to go back to what God wants done. That's why we got to pray. Come Holy Spirit. Oh, Heavenly Dove with all thy quickening power. Kindle a flame of sacred love in these cold hearts of ours. And as Reverend Lowe was preaching, return to God. Here's that second verse. Return, O holy dove, return. Ah, sweet messenger of rest, I hate the sins that made thee mourn and drove thee from my breast. Cause, cause, sequence, effect consequence here's the solution re resequencing <sighs> there it is put it up on the screen so we can see it resequence that's the solution we gotta resequence put it back up so they can see it for a little bit amen we've got a resequence all right thank you the shedding of blood substitutes something for something else. But I want to tell you something interesting that this is not exclusive to the Judeo Christian narrative. It was used by millennia old cultures who, out of innate beliefs, desired to please God or gods to make their lives better. There was something in humanity that understood if I'm going to please divinity, then I've got to offer the most valuable thing in life, which is life. Problem is, many cultures sacrifice babies. Mm -hmm. uh, many cultures put their infants through the fire, like Molik and the Baals that Elijah prophesied against. Uh, they use other humans to assuage the consequences of their own evil and disobedient actions. Uh, ju just like the pilgrims did when they got here, uh -huh. and they brought all their sickness and disease to the natives that were here, and, and, and so they they said, you know, we'll we'll give you a few things and some, you know, a few jewels and all of that in exchange for your lands, and then then the diseases. Uh, that had plagued them in Europe, followed them here with great breakouts and plagues that had existed. Uh, sometimes we want to use other humans uh, to pay the consequence for our own evil actions. Other cultures, watch this, drank the blood of their victims after military conquest, hoping to increase their strength and immortality. In other words, if I defeat you, I drink your blood. Now I have my strength plus your strength, which equals more mortality. Oh, it is a bloody mess, beloved, and we're just scratching the surface of it. Over at one particular site, it uh, talks about uh, cancer screening. It talks about gene sequencing. And gene sequencing... Uh, or, 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 or what we call genome gene sequence, genome sequencing, is a laboratory method that is used to determine the entire genetic makeup of a specific organism or cell type. Hold on for me just a minute as we're moving to this resequencing. This method can be used to find changes in the areas of the genome. These changes may, may help scientists understand how specific diseases such as cancer forms in the body. Because if we can understand at what point 
the sequencing is going to bring about cancer. If we can re-sequence it, it'll, have, it'll, be, it'll avert cancer in a person's life. By altering the sequence, we may be able to assuage the effects of horrible diseases that have plagued our, our, our lives and society for millennium. This is the idea behind gene therapy. If we can change the sequence, we can change the consequence. Are you with me? Are you with me? If we can change the sequence, we can change the consequence. Now, while I cheer and champion stem cell and all of the discoveries necessary to assuage disease, I'm, 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 I'm sad, beloved, because at best, the best we can do is just keep making fig leaves when God requires blood. Resequencing or resetting may lead us to the refreshing healing or cures from disease, and certainly we applaud that in every arena. However, inserting another action in between the sequence and the consequence that is not what God desired may cause us yet to fall short. Uh, but how many of you are thankful that you had an insertion in between the sequence and the consequence. I need somebody who will take the blame. <laughs> I need somebody who will shed blood in order for me to avoid the consequence of my actions. Do I have a witness here today? Jesus is the one, my brothers and sisters, who can resequence our lives. And guess what? You won't have to shed any more blood because his blood has already been shed. As I close, there is the cause. That is the sequence. And when we walk in our own willful and disobedient ways, we create an effect which is called the consequence. But I'm so thankful that there is a solution. That is the re-sequence. It's not my solution. It's not your solution. But it's God's re-sequencing of events. He knows how to work. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, he works in 24-hour periods. Do I have a witness here today? <laughs> To my Jewish brothers and sisters, the evening and the morning are the day. For those of us in the West, the morning and the evening are the day. But it doesn't matter how you look at it. When I woke up this morning, I saw some new mercy. Jeremiah said it was like dew on the grass. Doesn't matter what the weather was like, there's going to be dew on the grass. And just like there is dew on the earth, there are new mercies for me every morning. I was not in the garden with Adam and Eve. You weren't in the garden with Adam and Eve to be able to learn the lesson that fig leaves don't last. But I'm so glad that I didn't have to have a fig leaf to, to help me deal with the consequences of my own sequence of events. This is where we as Christ followers, not churchgoers, this is where we as Christ followers, not church folks, this is where we as disciples of Christ and not just Sunday spectators, we need to hang our hopes and hammer our stakes in the ground. We must have a cross-centered salvation. We must have a cross-centered salvation. We must have a cross-centered salvation. We must grasp the understanding of substitutionary Christianity. In other words, for what I should have gone through, Jesus stood up as my sacrificial lamb. He had already paid the tuition for the price that was necessary that I 
might live, we must come to grips with the horror of the crucifixion. Yes, his head was bloody. Yes, there were nails in his hand. This is not but what we feel, but this must become what we know. In order for us to sing to him, we need to know who, what the price was that's been paid. I know it was. I'm not feeling it. I'm not just uh, feeling it like it's some feeling, but I know that it was. Uh, I, I, it's not just a good church song to make me feel good while I'm coming around to get uh, uh, some juice and a piece of bread. I know it was. I know it was the blood uh, shed for me one day when I was lost. Uh, he died upon the cross. I know it was a bloody mess. I know it was a horrible crucifixion. I know. I know. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. Uh, there was a sequence. God said, if you obey, you will be blessed. <laughs> But there was something in me and something in you. It was that sin life that interrupted the sequence and gave us unacceptable consequences. But I thank God that here comes the resequencing. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. It's still the emblem of suffering and shame. Oh, Lord. I know I know it was the blood 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 When I should have died Been sleeping in my grave The Lord said I paid the price so that you can be saved. We have this life now because of a bloody mess. There was blood in the garden and there's still blood in this world. But I thank God for the blood of Jesus. 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 The of Jesus. Like the old preachers say, let me be under the drippings of your blood. Your blood that saves, your blood that forgives, your blood that heals. I know it was. 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 I'm not guessing about it. I'm not feeling about it. I'm not wishing about it. I know that I know that I know. I feel like almost feeling like calling the roll. You know how we used to do on first Sundays. When we had communion <laughs> and uh, the saints would get to singing all these songs. And by the time we finished communion, Sister Wall, we had sung about four or five songs, but it was all about the blood. <laughs> what do you want to sing? It reaches to the highest of mountain. It still flows to the lowest valley. The blood that Jesus said to me will never never lose its power for oh, the blood <laughs> oh the blood oh the blood I'm going to let that alone <laughs> mm, there may be somebody here today you may be here today and you may be dealing with the the sequence that was interrupted by your own sinfulness 
and, and yeah, that's the one right there. <laughs> and, and, and your own mistakes. There, there, there is a cause. That's the, the sequence. There is the effect. There is the consequence. But there is a solution. <laughs> that's the resequence of events. <laughs> and, and here's what here's what his blood opens the door for that no matter the mistakes you made yesterday because of his blood as you look forward you are not the sum of your yesterdays because his blood and his mercy is new Every single day. That's the power of the blood. Well, those, what happened to those animals that God killed in the garden? I don't know what he did with them. The text doesn't say. We do know they shed blood and because in order for God to get to the skin to cover them, blood had to be shed. I don't know about those tens of thousands of bullocks and rams and turtle doves and pigeons and goats that were offered in sacrificial systems throughout our Hebrew roots as family members now of the children of Abraham. I don't know what happened to all of them, but I do know that on an ignominious cross 2,000 years ago, Christ asked his father. He was the only one who could pay that tuition. He said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> and I know, I'm, I'm not guessing about it. I'm not just, it ain't, this ain't just a good feeling. This, this ain't just wishful thinking. I know <laughs> that the father heard him because as the blood came pouring out of his hands, the father looked and was reminded of what happened in the garden. The last time I saw it like this, I took some animals in the garden and dripped their blood out and it hurt my heart. But for my son to ask me to forgive him, and then he loves them so much he's going, so here's my blood. That's the price that I couldn't pay, that only he could pay. And so, beloved, now's a good time to come to Jesus if you've never known him before as your Lord and as your Savior. It's real simple. It's ABC. Admit, believe, confess. Accept Jesus in your life. That's, that's the first part. The, the second part is you, 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 you need a church home. You need a place where you can grow and be taught the word of God. And uh, we're fast learning that this is not about geography. It is about spiritual connection. Uh, God's not looking for a physical place to have a group of people. He's looking for a group of people to impact the physical space wherever they go. That's what church is. And we're not at our best when we're gathered. We're at our best when we're scattered, being the church that God called us to be. So if you need to be saved or you need to be healed or you need to be delivered or you need a church home, pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you came to interrupt the sequence, that my sequence of actions were about to create. Thank you. For delivering me from the consequences I believe that your blood washes that all away and I accept you as my Lord and as my Savior I believe in my heart that you died just for me it was a bloody mess and that you are now seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for me. I confess you are my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Sanctify me. 
fill me with your Holy Spirit so I can have the power to live for you in Jesus name in Jesus name amen now my brother my sister if you prayed that prayer it's just that simple by faith uh, the, 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 the house may not have shaken the, you might not have seen lightning flashing from heaven and there may not be angels uh, manifesting themselves and talking to you but it's a I know experience that my Lord has made a difference in my life information is on the screen I want to know what Jesus did for you and if you've given your life to him we want to continue to be a blessing in your life and send you some information so that you can be helped in your Christian journey. And if you said, you know what, I want to make Union Bethel my church home, I invite you to come. I invite you to come. You can join virtually. We'll connect with you and minister to you the things of God. And so if you're here and that's you, tell God thank you. And now for you, my brothers and sisters in the faith who needed to be reminded of the bloody horror of the cross I don't know about you but there ought to be a, a gratitude and a praise to spring up in your life to spring up in your soul right now when you think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for you ah, and what he's gotten you through you ought to just give him a crazy hallelujah praise and declare you know what I know it was the blood. I know, I absolutely know it. Nothing but the blood of Jesus could stand in the way of the consequences of my actions. For that, I'm thankful in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's get ready to receive our morning offering. And bless the name of the Lord for his goodness. Let me thank you, beloved. We challenge all of the people of God in your Lenten giving this year. That you might share a gift of seven dollars for the seven Sundays of Lent, the seven weeks of Lent. Some of you did that on Wednesday. Some of you would do it on Sunday. If you would share seven dollars for the seven weeks of Lent, uh, God is empowering us to do even greater, greater things. If every member in this church in the next seven weeks shared seven dollars in the life of the church, uh, there's some equipment that we'd be able to, to get very easily. We're about to get new lighting systems. The AV room is being finished. New lighting systems, new cameras, other things are coming in to enhance the ministry of audiovisual to the world, uh, as well as other equipment, port lists, and other things so that we can be able to move tens of thousands of pounds of food. Ten, did I say tens of thousands? I said tens of thousands of pounds of food. And uh, we thank God for the teams that work on that. And so as you sow your seed, it empowers us. Thank you for 1,206 pieces of clothing as of last Tuesday, I believe it was. Clothing is still coming in. So many people are still donating for that. We're going to go uh, in the, this week and buy the gaps So whatever we were missing. You empowered us to be able to go to buy that. So we're going to go buy big packages of, you know, undergarments, socks, pampers, whatever we need to fill the gaps and prepare those gifts for uh, those institutions that are ministering on front lines. God has empowered us to be able to do that. So wherever you are, my brothers, my sisters, our fathers, children, we like to use our phones because many, most of us give electronically. The information is on the screen for Givelify, for Realm, as well as the mail-in envelopes that we pay for. Father, we thank you for seed to sow, and we won't be unwise farmers and eat all of our seed, but we bring you the seed that belongs to you. The tithe is yours. It's not ours to determine what we're going to do with it. It belongs to you. 10% of all that you bless us with. And then, God, we sow offerings, Lenten offerings, oh God. Thank you offerings, first fruit offerings. We sow them with gratitude and joy. Now, God, do what you do best. Bless the seed and the sower. Bless the gift and the giver. And then, God, also, as I shared the other day with our teams, bless the work and the workers in jesus name we pray amen come on and sow that seed hit that give the five button and give now where it says donate and bless the lord's work and then we'll be back just to celebrate uh the end of the service the lord's supper and then go on from this place 
God bless you and heaven smile upon you is our prayer. opportunity to be here. My brothers and my sisters, my father's children, we are thankful for the opportunity to be in God's house. You see myself here, my sister, Pastor Reverend Crump, and we have on our mask. We are beginning, and we began Wednesday night to hopefully model before the congregation uh, just how we're going to have to be as we come back into this space. I wanted you to also know that we have uh, spent, I was thinking it was close to $7,500 to clean the ventilation systems of these buildings. They're in this building, it had never been done, and uh, that has to be done in the industrial building every two years. And I've been asking for it since I got here, when the system clean, system clean, system clean. And so finally we went on ahead and did that because the certification uh, for it being germ-free or, you know, reduced is sent to our insurance company is also part of the package that will go to the denomination uh, for our approval to be able to reopen. And so we're investing the seed you sow to make that a reality. And so this whole ventilation system was cleaned and certified. And I thank God for my, uh, one of my right hands here every day as a trustee, Sister Pamela Williams. We call her Video Pam. And uh, so thank you, sis, for your help in helping pass as the chairman of the board to accomplish that work for the house of God. And so we're thankful to God for that. And so we model this now, and you'll begin to see it over the next couple of weeks, that we will model this in this way. Generally for speaking, it's about 20 feet. Um, and uh, after that, uh, we need to have on our mass, all right? Now, that's with regard to what was. Our COVID-19 team is leading us into what will be, but it will still be socially distant, amen, and safe in what we do. So here's the solicitation. You that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins, you are in love and charity with your neighbor, and you intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your confession to Almighty God. As we kneel, you may kneel or sit wherever you are in your space with your communion in hand. And now Reverend Crump will lead us in the general confession. General confession. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty. Provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us, we do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us 
Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in the newness of life to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father. We most humbly beseech you and grant that we receiving these your creatures of bread and wine according to your son our savior jesus christ's holy institution may be made partakers of his most blessed body and blood who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread when he had given thanks he blessed it and gave it unto them saying take eat all of it for this bread represents my body which is broken for you likewise after supper he took the cup when he had given thanks, he blessed it and gave it unto them, saying, Take, drink ye all of it. For this cup represents the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of your sins. Do this as often as you shall do it. Do it in remembrance of me. Amen. My brother, let us eat together now. Broken body of the Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. My brothers and sisters, let us eat and drink together. Well, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Let's take a drink. And as we have renewed our covenant, we thank Almighty God. God will lead us in our Lord's prayer. Let us bow together in the Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, my brothers and my sisters, it's, it's a bloody mess that saved us. But I'm convinced more than ever that I know it was the blood. Yeah, there was a sequence, and I created some consequences. But Jesus came along to resequence our lives through the shedding of his blood. There is forgiveness of sin. That's the essence of the gospel message. And may this word now go with you. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and honor, dominion and power, both now henceforth and forevermore. Let the church say, Amen. Till I see you again, it's Pastor C signing off. Love you much. See you soon. Thank you for tuning into our broadcast. We hope that you've empowered, enlightened, and encouraged by the preached word. Thank you.